if we let it, if we learn it, we'll find things in there that describe us, and we'll be like, whoa, I didn't know that was out of bounds. I didn't know that that's not going to help me be a godly person. And it confronts us and cuts that stuff out. But it doesn't stop there. It puts the other stuff back in, and, and that's what it means to corre- uh, when it says correcting us. It rebukes us and corrects us. The correcting part is taking what's missing and, and putting it back in. It, it's, it's the act of, of, uh, uh, of someone, you know, uh, making you whole again. And, and this whole thing, anybody got GPS in their cars? Or the Tom Tom or the Garmin or whatever it is now? Aren't those things handy? They're nice, right? Everybody knows how they work, right? Like, uh, there's a screen on most of those where if you want to see the whole route mapped out, you can do that. That's kind of the teaching thing. God gives us the whole route. And you can kind of watch the whole. But then there's that part where you can kind of put it in, in, the, in the, uh, the mode where it tells you where to turn and when to turn. That's what most of us use it for, right? You know what I'm talking So like, uh, you know, if we need to go over somewhere in St. Pete, this, uh, this, this GPS thing will, will calculate our trip and it will tell us to start going down 60. Now, at Christmas time on 60, who's going down that road? Is anybody going down that road? I'm not going down that road. I live in Brandon. I know how to get around 60. All right, it's the goal of every driver in Brandon. <laughs> so what I'll do is, is I'll, I'll hear from the GPS where I'm supposed to go, but then I'll start going on my route. Now, what does the GPS do when you, when you go off route? Okay, but what does it tell? At the next light, do a U-turn, right? <laughs> like the computer, yeah, immediate, yeah, it's like an immediate U-turn. You, you, you must stop. It's almost like, like if there was like a, a truth-telling, you know, angry GPS system that was produced, it'd be this guy being like, hey, I said 60. What are you, deaf? Turn this boat around. That's what they would do, right? And that's the, that's the rebuking part of Scripture. I mean, sometimes that's what the Bible does to me. I'm reading it. Has anybody ever done this? You're just kind of like casually, I don't know, I'm reading it. Oh, oh, Bam. And it hits you right in something that you're doing. And it's, that's the rebuking part. But listen, we're obstinate and we keep driving, right? This, this thing can tell me to do a U-turn all at once, but I'm, I'm steering. I don't care. And we keep going and we keep going. What does it do then? It says recalculating route. And what it's going to do is it's going to figure out where we're headed. And in, in its best way, try to figure out how to get to where we're supposed to go from there. And this is the correcting thing. And look at me, church. This is the great thing about the grace of God. Because it doesn't matter how far off the route you've gotten, no matter how strayed you've been, how off target, how messed up, how jacked up, sinned up, no matter where you've been, God can recalculate the route. Isn't that great? And by his grace... (laughs) By his grace, he says, you know what? We took a little detour there, but we can still head back to where we're supposed to be going. Turn left here. Isn't that great? He goes on, he talks about the training principles. I don't have time to to tell you that. But uh, just know this, church. Do it from where you're seated. But you. We're supposed to keep our head in all situations. We're supposed to endure hardship supposed to do the work of an evangelist we're supposed to discharge the duties of our ministry for us to be able to do that we've got to have a good memory a memory that recalls how God has delivered every time and boosts us in our faith that he'll deliver again Uh, we need to anticipate what's coming prepare for the inevitable and be ready. Board up the windows. See, see you next Sunday. We'll board up some more windows together. Huh? And, and then <clears throat> we need to do what we know to do. Just do what we know to do. Most of our problems could be solved if we would just choose to do what we know we should do. But lastly, can we please get into God's word this year? No excuses. Someone will tell me that, you know, I have no time. Okay, yes you do. You have as much time as anybody else. We all get 24 hours. Lots of people in here read the book. We all have time for what matters to us most. Make time for God. 
we can do this. We can be a better church than we've ever been. And my prayer is that God will lead us to that. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for your word, and I thank you that it has the power to change us. Lord, if, if uh, we're sitting here today, and uh, we've settled for a life that's just kind of uh, coasting. You know, we look like a fisherman, but can't fish. Uh, Lord, uh, shake us, wake us. And, and this year, uh, shape in us your character. Uh, draw us to your word, God, and lead us to its truths. And then let those truths transform us, renew our minds through what we understand from your word. And as you do that, God, we're just going to seek to be more and more like your son, Jesus Christ, and to see more and more people find him as a church. So, by your grace, make this so. And it's in Jesus' name that I pray these things. Amen? If you need some prayer, come get it. Otherwise, Happy New Year.